So hi folks, I'm Dr. Kobe Kalix. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge First Nations people across Australia, their elders past and present, but in particular, um, Ghana country and Ghana people where I was raised and where I've returned to raise my children and I've learnt a lot from. Um, I've been lucky to travel places in South America and Asia and learn from other cultures. And it was only after those experiences in coming home that I really appreciated um, yeah, what I had grown up with and how maybe I should be paying more attention to some of those things. Um, and so I'm focusing on something today, a little bit in that space. I'm really conscious of time and I want this to be a start of discussion rather than an end of discussion. So this is research that I'm thinking of doing or rather I've had a lot of conversations with people about but I haven't written anything about directly myself. I also want to give a shout out to um, my partner Mark who just took our <laughs> crying baby out to the shops because I'm on maternity leave at the moment and I'm trying to balance this with um, looking after her. In particular, I wanted to thank Dr. Summer Mae Finlay who had conversations with about this and also Dr. Jared Field, who shared a talk last week that I tweeted about, in which he talked about um, the traffic of, trafficking of Indigenous knowledges, which I thought was a really poignant and relevant term in the context of people talking about biodiversity and knowledge. So I encourage you to check those out as well. Um, they're both Aboriginal Australian scholars, so definitely not citizen science. They are, um, they are within the academy. Um, and I just wanted to kind of point out that there are more and more people like that in Australia that we can partner with potentially. So I'm going to try and keep this quite straight, quite short. Okay, so there's this book, right? I'm really interested in evaluation of citizen science and how we can, as we've talked about a lot today uh, in various breakouts as well as touched on in some sessions, work towards standardising or sharing data in ways that allow us to improve things and, and make uh, information meaningful across different projects despite their local differences. So as part of doing that I've engaged with some international literature and this book chapter therefore came up um, in that and you'll notice from the author list that this isn't exactly a diverse group of authors which has limitations that we've touched on today in terms of what kind of knowledge you get out and I just wanted to acknowledge that all of these authors appear to probably have English as a second language and that that might be a reason that some of the language was used. And so I am being critical in this, but also trying to be constructive because I think in Australia now, we have this wealth of knowledge that we've been talking about so far today and might be in a position to actually feed back to the international community, some areas of improvement. So I think it is worth talking about this particular book chapter because it does have useful content about these um, bigger picture, how we might evaluate different citizen science projects, comparing, contrasting, bringing together. So broadly, I think these are good themes, looking at the scientific impact, looking at learning and empowerment among participants, and looking at impact for wider society. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about how we define, I guess, well, what's in between participants and wider society, because there are a whole bunch of different type of communities. But nonetheless, when I was reading through this chapter, I was going, okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I agree with this. Yep, yeah, this sounds sound, this sounds useful. And then I got to this particular item because they've got a quite comprehensive rubric of different criteria. And I got this far and I went, okay, no, I can't use this. Because to me, the language of easing access is really problematic when it comes to traditional and local knowledge resources. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't just change it out for something else either, because to me, this it represents a lot of the problems that we grapple with sometimes in terms of how citizen science data and citizen science projects should or might interact or exchange with local communities, particularly local communities who haven't historically had rights to protection for their own data, for example. Um, oh, I just... Oh, for everyone not speaking, apologies if my bandwidth is poor, we've got terrible weather here in Adelaide today, Hongana country. So really this is more of a conversation starter than a conversation ender. Is there a place for us as the Australian citizen science community to be feeding back internationally to actually try and constructively improve some of these international efforts, particularly given that some international organisations like UNESCO are taking more of a role now in talking about, for example, open data and open science. And I also just wanted to highlight, I, I was raised on Ghana country, but I have Anglo-Celtic and Mauritian Creole ancestry. I'm not a first Australian. Um, and so 
I'm very hesitant in talking about this. Um, so maybe we have to bring it to a stop. To the so I just want to show my up. next slide for some links that people should follow up. Oh, I might not be able to do that. Um, but basically, the be fair and care principles, if, if we can, I can't show it. Yeah, there we go. There's a three links at the bottom here. And basically, there's a whole bunch of international Indigenous scholars who've been working in this space about data governance. And I really think that our conversations need to start from what they've already written down. Um, yeah, that's my five, as you said. <laughs>